Hey everyone, so in this video we are going to take a look at the Unity Asset Package called Loading Screens by Lovato. And this normally sells for $10 USD, but it's currently part of the Unity Lunar New Year Bundle. The bundle as a whole sells for $30, so you get this as well as like 20 other assets. And I'll be reviewing as many of those as possible. The sale is going on at the time of this recording for like another 22 or 23 days. So, after you make the purchase, if you click on Window and then Package Manager, you need to change this to My Assets, at least in the 2020.1. So, you change it to My Assets, and then you just locate the package that you want. You click on Download and then Import, and that will make a few changes to your project. I've already done that because I don't want to waste your time watching loading screens. So, for one thing, it will modify this menu. So you'll see loading screen, and we'll get to this in a minute. And then you also see this. This is really just a pop-up about documentation. I'm not quite sure why they bothered doing that. That makes it a little bit messier than absolutely necessary. The second thing you'll notice is a new folder, which is typical. So loading screens. And then if you double click and open this up, you've got to read me. This is just a change log. So this is not the actual help file or walk through, as I said, that's the, the documentation that we looked at just a minute ago. And then you have some examples and scenes. These are the scenes that you'll be accessing, but not directly. You're not gonna be dragging and dropping these. We'll show you how to use these. And then here for content and prefabs, and then scene loaders, this is what you'll be directly utilizing and that the scene loaders does, as the name suggests, it loads the scene. So there's really not too much to show you there as far as um, uh, objects that you're going to utilize because a lot of this is really just kind of coding and functionality. So how does this work? Well, you have to do a few things. You need at least two scenes because presumably if you don't have two scenes, then you don't need a scene loader. So that could be, say, your main menu and then your level one, or if it's an open world, maybe it loads when you go into buildings or shops, whatever. But you're going from one scene to another. So I created two scenes. This scene one is just a square. This scene two is just an orb. I did that so it's easy to determine if the scene truly did load because one is a square, one is an orb. So you start with the scene that you want to exit. So you're gonna load another scene. So you come up here to window, you go to loading screen and then you do add levels. It opens up this object, which is in the resource folder within prefabs. So over here, you'll see scene asset. Now I've already been testing this, so it already says scene two. So as far as functioning what you're doing, this here needs to be the scene that you are going to load. So this is not the scene that you're currently in. This is the scene that you need to load, and this is uh, basically just giving you some documentation. I would prefer if the instruction is a little bit clearer, but this is all you have to do with this. So you've added that. Now what do you do? Well, next, for the scene that you're in, the scene that is going to be, you know, that you're exiting from, you need to have a canvas. Now, if you're making a 3D game, there's a really good chance you're going to have a canvas anyways, because that's where your UI is. So some of the way this package works is constrained by the weird way, at least in my opinion, the weird way that the UI works in Unity. I really don't like some of the functionality. And honestly, when I'm in a 2D game, I don't even use a UI layer. I just will create my own. It's easy enough to use sprite images and do on mouse down to make them work like um, work like buttons. I really don't like using um, uh, what they provide. But anyways, so what we need to do, as I said, we need to add a canvas. So we're in a, as I said, this is 3D, so you're probably going to be using a canvas. So game object, UI, canvas. It also automatically adds an event system. Okay. So what you have to do is on that canvas, you need to drag and drop the scene loader for the scene that you want. So you come back here to loading screen. You come back here to content, 
prefabs, scene loaders, and it's just whichever one you want to use. So we'll just grab one of these. We'll grab seven. And you just drag and drop that onto the canvas. Now, the use case that they give you in the documentation is click on a button to load a scene. That works in certain cases because if you're going from, say, a main menu, you probably have a button that says new game, start game, continue, whatever. And so, yes, clicking on a button would indeed load a new scene. I just want to point out that you're not always going to go from button click. Like if you're in a side scrolling shooter, you beat the boss. Well, that will usually trigger the loading of a new screen. Generally, you're not going to have a button that says continue. So just be mindful you're not always going to use a button to load a scene. But that is the, the use case we'll use for this demonstration. OK, so how do you do that then? You need to add another UI object. So game object, and then we go to UI, and we go to button. If you haven't used buttons, it actually has two things. One, the button image to the text. So the text technically isn't part of the button. It's just a child object. So for that, we'll just say new game, because that's, as I said, that's the theoretical use case is that you're creating a new, that you're starting a new game. Calling this new game functionally does nothing. You just give an information to the end user. So what you need to do, and this is the part that I was saying that I don't like about how the UI works. With the button selected, if you come down here on click, so what do you want to happen when you're clicking on this button? So you click on plus to add a new one. And then you take that scene loader, you put it where it says object. And now the way this works is when you put an object here, it needs to have a script attached to it. These functions will be pulled from that script. So in other words, rather than attaching a script directly to a button, you have to attach an object that has a script and then you choose it. To this day, I have no idea why Unity chose to do that, and I apologize for my rant. It just is completely, it's convoluted, and it doesn't make any sense to me. It, it, it's unnecessarily uh, complicated. So this, as I said, will have functions for the script that's attached to this object. And so there it is, BL scene loader, and then we want load level, and it says that it's going to use a string. So in other words, what you're doing here is you're putting in the name of the scene that you want to load. Well, we already said that that is scene two. So once again, you're talking the scenes in your project, so scene two. Now that's just about everything we need. For this to work though, you need the scenes to be loaded into the build, which is typical. That's, that's just the way it always worked. That's not uh, specific to this package. So under file and under build settings, make sure all relevant scenes are there. You just click on the scene and you drag and drop it. So if you want, I can redo that for you. So it's just scene one, scene two, and whatever is at the top, that's the scene that will load to begin with. So really, that should about do it. If I didn't forget anything, that should now work. So if we run this, so there's the new game button. You click on it, and you get this. You get this loading bar. And then it says, it's really small print. Press any key to continue. And sure enough, it did indeed load the other scene. But as I, as I said, scene one had the square, scene two had the orb. So it's working as intended. And there's just different things you can change about those. I'm not going to get into all that because that's just, you know, th this tutorial would be hours and hours long. You've got the basics of how to use the scene. You would then go into those individual scenes and make modifications. So. I have a few thoughts about this. I think that the documentation could be better. Also, I don't want to make a false statement here. I haven't been able to verify it, but I'm not certain if that load meter actually is um, corresponding to the, the amount of assets that have been loaded because there's just a single orb in scene two. So if I do this, it's loaded, okay? And yet, When I do this, 
to the best of my knowledge, that is a longer load time than what we just saw. So I'm uncertain if this is really measuring load or if it's just on a timer. Again, I don't want to make an incorrect statement, so you'll have to test that yourself, but just something that you know that it may not truly indicate the level of load that has accomplished. Anyway, so I think that's about it. Uh, this is certainly something you would be able to do on your own as far as not needing this package. If you want to see that, just let me know. Just leave a comment and say that you'd like to see how to do a loading screen on your own. Uh, as far as the TLDR, you would basically create an image in the canvas like we mentioned, but the image would be invisible, okay? And then what would happen is you can flag an object to not be deleted when a scene is being purged. So you, it's literally do not delete, and then you call out the object that you don't want deleted. And so when the scene gets purged, all that would remain would be that loading image. So technically, you could do this on your own fairly easily, but hopefully this explanation helped as far as how to use this. And if you have any other questions, just let me know. Uh, there are tutorials that come with this. This, again, is just meant to give you the broad strokes about how to integrate this into your project. So I think that's about it. Uh, again, leave any comments if there's anything you want to see. Let me know if you like this video. And uh, that's it. So uh, please enjoy the rest of your day.